We always start our shows with a prayer. It's from the Kansas City Blues Preservation Services Incorporated. We've been old, we've been going for just a year, which we're still in the developing stages. Uh, and a quick, brief history. We started out. Joseph Tillman, Joseph Planet, came up with an idea. He got with Glenn Patrick out in Vegas, a Kansas City native blues guitar player and singer, songwriter, producer, who got this put up on the internet on the Musical Industry News Network, um, everything was a go and then, and then the uh, sound guy backed out and everything went kind of boo and we went, oh boy. So we had 10 days to put something together, which ended up being uh, getting a hold of a bunch of bands, a bunch of equipment, and pulling it off. And then we found out that we were, uh, he wanted to honor Leon Estelle, Mr. Blues, Cotton Candy, and Bob Schnevel, Trembling and Foot's father. We didn't know that she had not had a headstone yet. We knew there were some events that raised money, but for some reason or another, it never came to pass. So, Bo Johns calls me and he goes, I want to get to the bottom of this. What the hell's going on? She doesn't have a headstone. You're going to get, you're going to honor her? And I said, well, I didn't know that. We'll figure it out. And then he signed off with, that's my mama. And everybody called Cotton Mama, but I got a little story to tell you about Bo Johns. He, uh, he was real tight with her and the two brothers that he has. Uh, Don, Don, Donald over here, Donald Johnson, and Paul Johnson. They were both brothers to Charles Leroy Johnson. That's a blues man's name right there, Charles Leroy Bronson. Johnson. So, uh, but Bo Johns is what he went by, and we call him Bo Johns KC. Now the printer did real good on the birth dates and the uh, and the passing dates, and they gave Bo Johns January 39th. We'll get that fixed, but you know, it's a Bo John thing, man. It's the blues. Uh, so what happened was, is Cotton got a hold of their mother before she passed and said, I will watch your boys and I got their back. So their, room, so their mother passed. They spent Christmases, Thanksgivings with Cotton, showing her walk. They're the ones that picked out her clothes for her funeral. So what we've done is we had money for Speedy's headstone and then Bo Johnson came up, what, three, four weeks ago. And uh, so we transferred that. And that's a, but we're honoring Bo Johns and we're propelling into the headstone. And we got up, and there's a whole lot of other people that we got coming up that we're, we're going to honor as well. We, I could name a, a ton. So what happened was, is we found out that uh, this was a thing that Bo Johns would want to be with Cotton Wool at the cemetery at 53rd between Sterling and Raytown Road is Burking Cemetery. And that's where she's buried in. It's an old style cemetery. You look at the headstone, the body's on the other side of the headstone with the head, and the feet are, are pointing towards the east. When they get up, as the resurrection would be, the past is behind them and they walk into a new day. So you can't really mess with that. And that, they do them all that way. It's a kind of a cool thing. I've learned a lot about this since I got involved. So what they went ahead and did is they... Uh, they said, hey, how about a bench? We got a three-foot bench that'll hold an urn in it. Okay. Or if you go four-foot, it'll hold three urns. Well, I went back and asked Paul and Donald. I said, you know, the inevitable will happen someday. I hate to bring it up. Do you want to go to Carolina with your, with your biological mother? Or do you want to be with Bo Johns? And they said all three brothers stay together. They live together. They still, these two are together. They all three take care of each other. So we got the bench, and it's going to take care of And we've got that order. And we'll have, it'll be posted once I get the car. We'll take care of that. And we're taking care of Speedy, who lives north of Columbia, Boonville area. And he is, uh, uh, he's in Fayette, Missouri. And a lot of people knew Speedy, they knew about his daughter. She passed on after he died. She's got a nice headstone, he's got a little marker, and you gotta thank Jazz Coda for that. Jazz, Cotton Candy started Coda Jazz Fund for Sonny Kenner to give him a proper burial. That sparked Coda Jazz Fund. 
They went and they have taken care of Lawrence Wright, they've taken care of Speedy Huggins, they took care of you know all kinds of Adam Page. You go to their website, it's awesome. They got a lot of they got a good bump of money granted to them, and they went after every musician they could find that did not have a marker and they put a marker. So they're not in unmarked graves. And you got to give a big props to them. They are supporting us, and they said, "Well, that'd be great to handle the blues." And I go, "Well, you got about eight blues. You got at least four people that you've honored that have played in my band, so I know they're group. But they back then played blues, jazz, whatever it took. They didn't care. But anyway, this is for Bo Johns, and I want to end Speedy Huggins. But the whole thing started with a memory of. And these are the first honorees. That's what this picture. We have one we're going to auction off at, later on. Then, Leon Estelle, Mr. Blues of Kansas City. Number one guitar player in the five-state region in 1958. Emmanuel Cleaver claimed him as Mr. Blues of Kansas City. Anybody knows about you know, Jimmy Griffith and, and the Untouchables. Later became King Alex and the Untouchables. Or, when I played with him, it was Leon Estelle and the KC Ghetto Band. Then you have Bob Snevlin, who toured internationally with Avlock, had his own successful band with his wife at that time, Lisa, trampled under Foot's parents called Little Eva and the Words. Then you have Cotton Candy, and everybody knows Cotton, Queen of Kansas City Blues, man, and that's what it says on their hits there. Bo Johns was a hell of a writer. He could write an article, he wrote great for some publications. He had a blues art, and he supported and he, and he made sure that if he felt what was right, he felt like he needed to say it. Hey, you got to give him props for that, because a lot of people, he brought it up, and that's how Cotton got a hit still. So uh, we really miss Bo, and I loved his morning posts on Facebook. There is a site on there uh, his brother's helping out with. Speedy Huggins in 19, in the 30s, he was uh, graduated in eighth grade. He opened up the Cherry Blossom Club. Number one premier club at 18 combined. He uh, went in the army, toured through you, uh, Europe, and performed while he was there. He came back, enrolled into the Conservatory of Music for drums and percussion. It's a hell of a deal. He was a tap dancer and, a, and he was also a drummer. For uh, he did a week engagement out in San Francisco with Ella Fitzgerald. He's quite qualified. Anybody knows he was king of Kansas City nightlife. We're putting a crown on him. We got the Queen of Kansas City Blues. We got the King of Kansas City Nightlife. And we got everybody else that we can find. We're going to start putting in and uh, give a big round of applause to all the people that have come that we don't even know about. For Kansas City. This is just an ongoing, really.